without any doubt, you know, I mean, this, uh, it, it is uh, so fantastic to, and a privilege to conduct the Berlin Philharmonic, not only for the great quality, which everybody knows, you know, I mean, the, who doesn't know the, the prestige of the orchestra and the quality, but once you work with them, you know uh, that uh, they are really extraordinary working also, you know. They are enthusiastic, they work with a lot of love, and, uh, you know, as many times as things they have to be repeated, you know, in a recording that I have been doing now with uh, Sarah Chang, you know, in a recording session, you repeat things, you change uh, ideas and things, and every time they come for another take, for another take, they come with the same enthusiasm and the same the love for the, the work that they are doing, you know. I think that they are artists. That's the reason that they don't, uh, they don't get uh, really tired. I mean, they work many, 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 many hours a day, but they work with the same kind of love and care. And I have found a very, very friendly atmosphere, which is, uh, is uh, extraordinary. It's very encouraging, you know, for the debut. I study, um, of, of course, to be a pianist and uh, a conductor before I was singing. I was in the Conservatory, Na National Conservatory of Mexico, and I, I used to play the piano, and I used to be, uh, we were to be in the same class uh, studying together Eduardo Mata, which is, sadly, we lost him in an accident, plane accident, he was a very prestigious conductor. He was my very good friend, and. Uh, Together we were, we were studying, and uh, I, I start uh, also my conducting there. But then I immediately I stop studying because I start singing. My life starts moving into the singing, and I start the first years. Of course, I dedicate myself to the singing. But once I establish my career as a singer, at the the fact of uh, being a conductor also, it wants me to to continue, and since uh, those years I start maybe doing first, it was very little, maybe I was doing two performances in a year, three performances, and little by little I went just going further and further, and uh, by now I have done, maybe I do every year um, a combination of 30 or 35 or 40 between um, uh, performances, opera performances in different theaters at the Metropolitan in Washington, Los Angeles, Vienna, um, etc. And uh, concerts like with the, also with the Chicago Symphony, with the um, uh, Washington National. I, I have been doing concerts also with the orchestras in London. And uh, now, of course, this is the, a great great day for me to, to do a concert uh, with the Berlin Philharmonic. I am convinced that if I was not uh, being a singer, I will c continue with my conducting, and I don't have any doubt that I, I have the tools that they are need, you know, to be uh, a, a conductor. And, uh, but the thing is that you never have enough time now. Is when I will stop singing, maybe, I will be able to answer you that, because then I'd be able also to work daily, daily, daily with the orchestras, because this is the, this is the way then you develop and you know. When I, when I have the time, when I'm working in a production, in an opera production or in concerts, and I have the time to work deeply into the pieces and listen well and know the musicians and really start to have a relation, it is really the music is really starts to come fantastic. I mean, this is an orchestra that they play spontaneously, spontaneously they play so great, but of course they need, they need somebody leading them, you know, and, uh, and the relation has been really wonderful now. We have a, a program that is by no means easy, you know, it's a, it is a program that I, I have been, to, um, when we start talking about the program, I, I have in my mind to do many different things, and many, of course, it's a, it's a popular concert. The Valtavino, of course, we know that it is a, it's the last uh, concert of the orchestra, and after they go on vacation, so it's, a, it's always a celebration, it's a happy day. And the repertoire, most of the time, is popular and so on, and I was 
trying to, to do kind of a more international concert, but uh, I know that the television wants very much this Spanish feeling on the program, and uh, so I decided three ways program. I, I went uh, for Spanish composers like uh, Falla, Alvenis, um, uh, Chapi, and um, uh, wait a moment, uh, Sarasate, Sarasate, two uh, composers that has been read, write music about, uh, they wrote music about Spain, even without being Spanish, but really being sensational, like uh, Chavrier from España, uh, like Rimsky-Korsakov doing the Capriccio Español, you know, and uh, like uh, somebody that everybody even cons is considered uh, f uh, Spanish, like Bisset, who wrote Carmen, with this arrangement of the Carmen fantasy in Sarasate. And uh, finally, I also found a, a very charming piece that is called An Spanish March by it, um, Johann Strauss. And um, uh, even uh, we have, um, it has a kind of a feeling then the, if one doesn't do it like a pure march, but the tan tan tria ta 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 ti ta riam pum ta ra ri ra 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 ri ta ri ra ra pum. It has a, a, a feeling like in Madrid, the classical dance is called shotis, and it has this kind of feeling, you know. Uh, so I'm I'm trying to do it with the orchestra to, to sound more Spanish than it was just a, a march. And finally. I like also to add, and of course, Faya, you know, in, in the big work. And I f add also to the program uh, something by a Mexican composer, Pablo Moncayo, which is Huapango, but is, is to show the influence of the Spanish music in the, these composers, in the Mexican composers, you know. Then, of course, they, they have is the feeling of the, um, of the um, indigenous, um, some of the indigenous instruments. But with the tan 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 tit 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 tam pim pam tak 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 tim pam pam pam, this feeling of going in two and in three, then we hear it in falla, and we hear it, you know, this change of rhythms, which is the is very 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 much uh, Spanish. So finally, we came with a program that I think that it is kind of a, a Spanish atmosphere. We have also lecuona, you know, written in Malagueña and uh, Andalusia, which there are beautiful pieces and uh, being a Cuban composer. So we, we try this, Spanish composers, uh, Spanish uh, composers writing about Spain and the influence of the Spanish music. The Valtubino is, is a fabulous place. I have done some concerts there. The atmosphere is always uh, a great, great uh, party. And I am very lucky to have uh, Sarah Chang playing, you know, Sarah Sate, the Carmen Fantasia, and the Sigone Weiser, and also Ana Maria Martinez singing some of the Sarsuela arias, you know, which there are so, so well known in Spain, you know. So I think that it is um, a wonderful program altogether. So let's hope that the public enjoy it, and of course the television public will. I've actually performed with Maestro Domingo before. Um, I first met him when I was about 10 years old or so. We did a, a concert together in Rio de Janeiro, um, where he was, of course, singing <laughs> with his gorgeous voice, and I was playing. Um, and then I think two years after that, uh, we had a concert in Chicago where he was conducting for me. So I have shared, shared the stage with him on the conductor's podium, and um, naturally, everyone, the audience, as well as the musicians who are playing uh, with him and for him, just love him, just adore making music with him. And, you know, Maestro is, is fantastic with this, and the orchestra, you know, it's just second nature to them. You know, I can do whatever I want, and they just, they know what I want to do before I even do it myself. So for me, this has been a great week. Um, and at the same time, you know, I've always believed that uh, the violin should sound like the human voice and you know, I think the human voice is by far the most beautiful sound in the world and you know when Maestro starts singing a phrase when he wants to express himself but can't quite put it into words he starts singing and then of course everything clicks because we all totally totally understand what it is that he wants.
Maestro Domingo obviously is one of my favorite tenors and um, I've seen him singing the role of Carmen and uh, the role in, in Parsifal and he's He's amazing. He's amazing. And that musicality that comes through his voice, it is now flowing through his arm and into his conducting. And all of us musicians love him for it.